Welcome back to DXB today. Right, we need you to grab your passport. OK, <laughs> have passport in one hand and phone in the other hand. Why? We've got ourselves a bit of a travel special at the moment. Uh, yet we're focusing on the Eid break, which is, of course, just around the corner, but equally looking further down the field to summer. So hopefully by the end of the show, you're booked down to the airport and off. All right, OK, to that end, we need a great consultant. And our next guest is a CEO helping travellers find top-notch accommodations and, of course, travel experiences across the globe. Known for his profound industry insights uh, and the travel industry as a whole, please welcome to DXB today, uh, Ahmed Suleiman from the TCA Group of Companies. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. Good to have you on board. And thanks so much indeed for your time as well. I know it's a busy time of year, for, but to that end, and it's a unique one, this one, isn't it? When you consider that the Eid break coming at a similar time to the Hajj pilgrimage, not that far away from the grand uh, summer getaways for a lot of people as well, some holidays just around the corner, all of them coming together. So what's the advice, especially when it comes to an Eid break? Is it to sort of keep it fairly local or are people going further afield? Well, it's very interesting. Statistically, uh, we work with a company called Mabrian who does support us in terms of finding out and trying to get a finger on the pulse kind of methodology. Uh, statistically, we've seen a lower take in short haul destinations, so 14% short haul versus 43% and 41% respectively for longer haul and medium haul. So between three to six hours and six plus, six to 12 for the longer haul destinations um, has been the major focal f focal point from the Dubai market, uh, which is very interesting to, to be fair. Uh, saying that, I just feel like people are kind of gearing up for this escape and yeah. with what's going on in Europe and with uh, with travel being such a, a need, a necessity for people uh, right now to, to reinvoke their souls, uh, they are looking at these destinations. So Egypt's doing well, Turkey from the, from the medium haul, and then we've got the UK and Thailand, as you mentioned, yeah, doing well for the longer haul. Yeah, well, definitely, Ahmed, we have to talk about religious uh, tourism, of, of course. course, because this time of year, uh, Hajj or Umrah, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, right next door, obviously people will be flocking there. Uh, and I know Saudi is updating a lot of their rules at quite a fast pace. Is there anything new that we should know about? For example, can women now go to Umrah or go to Hajj without a mahram? So yes, so Saudi, uh, we have to look at this and, and, and take it um, as it is, as the largest pilgrimage on, on planet Earth. Yeah, And we have to give credit to the legislations and to the developments that the kingdom has done in order to make it easier. Um, the Hajj process still in its entirety is an independent process onto its own versus the other visa legislations and regulations that the, that the, that, that the kingdom has put into place. However, generic visas via Omra or tourism have now become increasingly easy. Right now, as a GCC resident, you can actually just apply online and your e-visa will come directly to you. That has been opened up in the last month. Um, in terms of specifically towards Hajj, obviously work, what we would recommend is work with a legitimate partner that works in that segment. Um, initially, we'd have to obviously focus on achieving or, or securing a Hajj permit, which is based on a, an allowance is allocated to, to the countries around the world, done by the Ministry of Hajj. And, and then from there, uh, applying for the visa accordingly. Amazing. Uh, would you say that the Umrah visa allows visitors to explore other parts of Saudi Arabia as well, beyond just their religious pilgrimage? Yes, and that's what's amazing about it. Um, the visa process in Saudi allows for full exploration of uh, both religious and touristic sites. So this really does open up a world of opportunities within the kingdom. Um, it also, furthermore, enhances the experiences with with tech adapted support with the Nusuk app if it was a religious tourism kind of experience the Nusuk app allows you to book uh, periods of times both within both major religious sites so all of these elements have kind of supported that process and that movement. Ahmed we were talking on the sideline um, mashallah you have tons of experience in the sector when you travel do you go to trending or not? Oh, very interesting question. Um, I prefer not because I prefer to, uh, as Ralph Waldorf said, said once, I think his quote is, is travel is to leave your footprint versus to follow others. So that's the kind of mindset that I kind of impl impl implement in my travel experiences. And I always want to explore and I always want to learn more. And, and I truly believe that travel is an education. Yeah. Are people 
Are people traveling to destinations or are people traveling for experiences? Like, you know, people love their food, people love their culinary experiences. Are people going away for a culinary experience regardless of where it is? We're seeing multiple, multiple reasons. When we do the research, again, we, we do look statistically as well as feel from our own kind of experiences within the market and our own network. But statistically, we are seeing art and culture you know, is on the rise, is growing. Uh, health, tourism is growing and wellness is growing. So these segments all point towards experiences, mm. yeah? uh, experiencing a new culture, experiencing a new cuisine, experiencing a new way of life because health can be determined by multiple segments as well as, well, as can wellness. So keeping all of that in, into uh, consideration, we're seeing that experience or travel is the way forward. Furthermore, when it comes to luxury travel, yeah, this is where hotels do really need to kind of up their game in terms of what are they delivering. I mean, definitely. Uh, I want to actually know since before, uh, so many things have changed, different trends before COVID and after COVID. I want to know, have you seen a change in trends as to where people are going? And that's a question for you as well, Omar. Uh, I've, uh, has there been a change in where people are deciding to go on holiday? Yeah, for me, I've seen that uh, people are heavily focused on experience. Um, at the end of the day, uh, people want to actually uh, experience their travel rather than just change in geography or change in location. Um, a lot of people actually, even me personally, in my previous life, it just was traveling for me, was a change in location. I'm here today, tomorrow I'm in London, I will do the same thing I did here. But I think uh, being human and, and connecting with the destination and having a memorable moment and living a life you will remember ultimately comes out from experiences. What have you noticed, Ahmed? Are you, are you thinking people are traveling more or less for that perfect Instagram picture? Oh, <laughs> that, that's a challenge. Um, more or less, I wouldn't like to debate, but, uh, but in, ter in terms of have we seen a change? Yes, 100%. And I think during COVID, one thing that I, we did recognize from COVID, it was the first instance in humanity where the entire world experienced the same thing. Okay, we've never had that, be it a world war, or be it otherwise. So this was an ex this changed people's mindsets, and it also allowed people to value life uh, and value the experiences that the world has to bring. Mm -hmm. um, Ahmed, with all the different types of tourism uh, that you know we are seeing right now, medical, cultural, adventure, sleep tourism is something mm -hmm. we've previously discussed on the show culinary tourism and shopping, which is my kind of uh, travel plan. Which one would you say is the fastest rising or the most popular kind? So as I mentioned, uh, so arts and culture is the cultural tourism element of it, is we're seeing as the fastest uh, growing, uh, being culturally aware, understanding different cultures, seeing different cultures, experiencing different cultures. And that covers both from the food uh, as well as the actual experiences within any destination. However, as you can say, there's still the traditional hotspots, which are shopping. Uh, it's, still, it's still there. People still enjoy shopping, no matter how much of this, uh, of this wonderful city we live in uh, has an abundance of shopping, the biggest mall in the world, yet yeah, yeah, shopping on the Champs-Élysées or in the center of London still has its, uh, has its pull. Yeah, I'm sure it hits different. Ahmed Sliman, <laughs> thank you so much for being on DXP today. Absolute pleasure. Thank uh, you so much, Ahmed. All right, and happy travels as well. Thank you. Now, coming up on the show, we are going to have our spotlight. And today, it's on a corporate travel agency in the city, providing reliable and efficient services uh, tailored to your needs, creating the best routes to the right location. This is Bersin Abu Rob from You Travel. My name is Basil Abu Al Rob. I am the co-founder and managing partner of U Travel, as well as uh, Time and Motion Executive Services. We are a B two B company that uh, serves uh, corporations and businesses in Dubai. We've uh, we've noticed um, when when we come to the market that there is a, a lack in the um, delivery service. Um, and accuracy and uh, timeliness. So we wanted to fill that gap and make sure that our clients are getting the best uh, and quickest service they can get. We hope to have more than 500 or 600 cars in the next three to five years. And uh, we want to make sure that we have better deals with our partners such as hotels and airlines.
It's very fast paced and decisions happen very quickly and the implementation is even quicker. So um, we like that. Uh, there's no waiting around uh, for things to happen. Things happen with or without you. So you just have to keep reinventing yourself and making sure that you're on top of your game. Coming up, we are discussing personalized journeys that foster self-growth with a team at We Love Transformational Travel, the world's first booking and advisory platform for life-changing trips. Plus, we've got great music on set, so please stay with us.